Check, check. So, uh, hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll just get started in five minutes. So if you want to find a seat um, on the lawn over here, there are refreshments, water in the back. Um, I would definitely advise everybody grab a little bit of water to uh, deal with the heat and we'll get going in just a moment. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I think uh, we'll get started with today's proceedings. Thank you for joining us in uh, the blazing summer heat. Um, thank you for joining us for this timely and important event. Um, just before we get started, wanted to start with an acknowledgement that uh, today's proceedings are taking place on the uh, traditional and ancestral territory of both Treaty 6 and Treaty 4 First Nations, as well as the homeland of the Métis. Um, I would also like to acknowledge um, Senator Spyglass um, and Elder uh, Milton Oxbin, who is going to be uh, doing a, a blessing to open today's proceedings. So I'll invite them to the front to uh, start us off with a prayer. Um, I'm sorry, they're actually going to, Senator Denny, stand up. Yeah. Milton. Perfect. Even better. Cool in the shade. Okay. Uh, today is a significant that needs to be done. Like you look out over the crowd, you see all these different nationalities. It ain't only it don't ain't only the white against the natives. It ain't only the white against the Hispanics. The African Americans. There's hatred amongst everybody. And signing of this document shows that the town of Battleford, the city of North Battleford, want to live in harmony. They see the racism every day, they hear about it every day. Being on a mayor, you hear about it, you see about it on Facebook. It hurts not only the leadership, but it hurts the people in general. How can you live in harmony if you hate somebody? We have to learn how to forgive each other. We have to learn to live with each other, we're neighbors. We're all family. We go to the same place when we die. Don't matter what color you are, don't matter what race you are, we all have to live here together in harmony. So with that, I'm going to say a word. So with that, Jenny will say a few words. Hi, hi. Thank you for inviting me, the mayor. Thank you, I forgot your name already. <laughs> Thank you everyone. I'm Jenny Spyglass. I come from Mosquito Grizzly Bear. I was also selected to be a senator for, uh, for the chiefs. I thank them over and over again. I, um, I'm learning as, I, as I'm getting older and um, I'm a, I'm a residential school survivor at uh, Delmas uh, Thunder Child School, and uh, it, it was a, it's a sad one. So uh, my heart goes out to the to the young kids. I wanna forget about it and get on with my life. I don't wanna go back and think about it, cause. One of them was my little brother that passed away up there. We had a, a feast, a ceremony there the other day. It hurt it. 
pain came back and I said, I don't want it. I want to live happiness because I'm getting older. Where I'm, I'm supposed to be happy with health. And with that, I like to say my language was taken away, but I got it back and I always thank the Creator for the blessing, for the help He has given us, all of us, not only me, but all of us. And today I'm going to pray in my language, because my language means the world to me. I speak my language at home, I speak my language, whoever understands me. And with that, I, I will pray together. Ah, <laughs> Thank you again to Senator Spyglass and Elder Oxman for opening today's proceedings. Um, I'd now like to acknowledge the presence of government leaders from First Nations governments, the Métis Nation, our provincial legislature, neighboring municipalities. On behalf of the city of North Battleford and town of Battleford, I welcome you to today's timely and important event as the city and town sign on as members of the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. My name is Tom Howard. I'm going to be the MC today. Um, I am the coordinator of the Battlefords Regional Community Coalition. Uh, the BRCC is a leadership table consisting of the two municipalities and uh, Little Pine, Lucky Man, Mooseman, Sweetgrass, and Soto First Nations. We're building respectful government to government relationships and working towards system change on a spectrum of regional issues and opportunities. Coalitions such as ours are vehicles for unity and cohesion, standing against racism and standing for inclusive, an inclusive and equitable region are goals that bring cohesion to our coalition. Indeed, they're the reasons the BRCC was founded. We applaud the mayors and councils of Battleford and North Battleford for their decision to join the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities today. The Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities began in 2005 as the Coalition of Municipalities Against Racism and Discrimination. By signing on to this network, Battleford and North Battleford will join 82 other community uh, Canadian municipalities who have committed themselves to fighting discrimination and building open, inclusive societies. They will create action plans that will help them accomplish these goals. By creating these plans, the city and town are looking inward at how their policies and processes can be improved in an equitable spirit. By acting on these plans, they will reach outward to build a regional community that works for all. These are important and commendable steps. The ongoing revelation of children's graves in residential schools across the country show how far Canada still must go to build the kind of inclusive society that we're striving towards. There's still much pain we've yet to acknowledge, much yet reckon with. But the willingness to reach outwards while also looking inwards can be the basis for lasting change. So as we go through today's events, I hope that we can all reflect on how we can be a part of that change. Um, with that being said, we'll move on to uh, opening comments from the Mayor of Battleford, Mayor Ames Leslie.
Thank you, Tom. I want to welcome everybody here today and, and thank everybody for taking the time to be here in, in such uh, beautiful weather. Um, I'm sure we all can think of other places we'd rather be in this type of weather. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, Chief Flory would rather be on her side by side chasing her cows than sitting here right now, but um, I, I do appreciate everybody being here. I want to acknowledge the elders for, for the kind words, uh, the words of wisdom, um, and those words resonate deeply here today. Um, it's hard to not notice behind us is, is the eve where three rivers or two channels and another river come together. You know, the, the, where the rivers meet, Satchawasik is the name that started all of our BRCC. We are right here, the epicenter where our rivers come together. It's also we're here to bridge communities today and, and today is the first time the north span of the old original bridges of the Battlefords are open. It's been a year since this bridge has been opened. And the support of the Indigenous leaders in the crowd today are the reason that this bridge is going to be rehabilitated back to a state where it can stay open permanently for 20, 25 years. The town of Belford is truly grateful for that. We're about relationships, and moving forward, it is about relationships. I got a phone call yesterday asking, why are you signing on with the Coalition of in, uh, Inclusive Municipalities? Help me understand, Ames. The reason for me isn't about checking a box. It's not about some plaque that I can hang on the wall in my office. It's not to get my name in the media. It's not about that next photo shoot. For me, it's about time for action. It's time for less words from me, more time of, for listening and trying to understand. And I'll key on the word try, because I have a lot to learn. I sat at Delmas on, on Monday and I was humbled listening to the stories, even though Milton and Floyd Favel and, and Chief Snakeskin played a trick on me with, with indigenous barbed wire, um, told me it was good for me. It was good for me. <laughs> yeah, they, they made sure I was going straight home. But it's time for action. It's time for producing results within the town of Balford to address racism and reduce racism. You won't find this document after today hanging on the wall in town Balford anywhere. Where you will find it is in the drawer where my council and myself can pull it out to keep ourselves accountable for the commandments and the commitments that we're going to set forth to keep ourselves and our residents accountable. We will use this document to create a pathway to build a community that considers inclusion when we make our decisions. We will look to the vast cultural benefits that the town can tie into when we're looking to develop economic and growth and, and businesses within our community. We'll hold ourselves accountable to make mutual lifelong agreements and hold ourselves accountable to hold up our end of the word mutual. We want to build friendships like our children do. Build a community where our children can choose to be what they want to be, do what they want to be, and with whomever, whoever they want to be, without the fear of persecution and oppression because of the color of their skin. It's taken me a while to learn that statement. I don't know what it's like to be oppressed or have the fear of walking in somewhere because I am a different color. Relationships will be key for the sustainable growth of the Battlefords, and without the rationalized people, none of our growth goals will be possible. So unless we take the steps today to make our community more sensitive to the needs and requirements of all rationalized individuals, folks, we will fail. We will fail to progress in the way we want to for the future. Chief Wayne may say to me, well, Ames, why do you need a damn piece of paper to do this? It sounds like it's common sense. Very fair. Many of the chiefs in the crowd may say, Ames, treaties were a promise on paper, and look where we are today. Very true statement. I won't stand here and promise that we'll be perfect. I won't promise that we won't make mistakes along the way to try and better our community. 
we may have to recalculate our route a few times, but what I am certain of is my council is committed to change, they are committed to listen, and we are ready to enter agreements going forward with our hearts and our minds, not just our checkbooks. We will be held accountable by our actions in the implementation of these commandments that we will sign on to today. But you, our partners, will also keep us accountable. Of that I am certain. I am sure we will request feedback, consultation, and that consultation and feedback will outwardly be given. So that is why me and my council felt it was necessary to sign on to this. It wasn't even discussion, it wasn't a debate. Tom brought it forward in front of our council and it was approved within five minutes. So I want to thank everybody again for attending today and being part of this. And as I part, I ask each and every one of you to hold the town of Balford accountable for what you heard today. Like I said, we won't be perfect and we may stray, but I empower you to help us back to the right path. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, and good afternoon, everyone. I want to first uh, acknowledge the elders and uh, the elected officials who have come here today, some from a very large uh, and long distance. Thank you very much for being here today and sharing in our very special event. Seek first to understand, then be understood. In the words of Stephen Covey, the city of North Battleford is honored to be situated in the Treaty 6 territory and in the traditional home of the Métis people, where our communities come together and seek to understand one another, where we are equally committed to learning, embracing, <laughs> and celebrating our diverse community. As we gather here today, it is fitting we do at the Conver uh, Conference of the North Saskatchewan and Battle Rivers, as um, Mayor Leslie just said. In the Cree language, this special place, the Battleforts, is often called Sachikawajik, which means where the rivers meet, because today we meet as equals. Committed to the common goal of the elimination of discrimination and fostering inclusivity, creating a better future for everyone. <clears throat> In 2018, our region came together to meet and discuss common community interests and concerns. During this meeting, it was established that first and foremost, we must all unify and work together to create a more connected and mutually beneficial community for all our residents. That very first meeting planted the seed that led to the signing of the Sachikawajik Agreement in 2019, which signified that our communities we're dedicated to working together for the rights and benefits of all. The signing of the Sachikawajik Agreement was a significant moment in our region's history and one that remains in our region's future growth. However, inclusion is not a singular term. Inclusion means everyone. The city recognizes the, that although we have remained active in conversations surrounding racism and discrimination over the years, we still have a great deal of work ahead of us to lay the foundation for a more inclusive, welcoming, and unified community. Racism and discrimination is debilitating for society and not only marginalizes many Canadians, but can even lead to tragedy. One only has to look at past examples like the unmarked graves recently discovered at the sites of the former residential schools. But there are also recent examples of tragedy as a result of racism and discrimination. 
One example, three weeks ago in London, Ontario, four members of a Muslim family were walking on the sidewalk. A vehicle mounted the sidewalk, ran them over, and drove away. This is why we're here today. The time for action, as Mayor Leslie said, is now. We must all stand together to root out racism and discrimination and embrace diversity and inclusiveness. We must all do our small part, as the small parts all add up to meaningful change. In May of this year, City Council established and adopted a four-year strategic plan which recognizes the critical impact that a safe, healthy, and inclusive community has on social fabric of our region as a whole and the well-being of our residents individually. In adopting the strategic plan, we are a council, I'm sorry, we as a council have declared our commitment to govern with integrity and respect, to approve policy and programming that further supports and instills the systemic processes required to maintain and foster inclusion and foster more educated understanding of our community's diverse diversity moving forward. When the Battlefords Regional Community Coalition first approached the city to join the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities, it was a welcome and timely request that Council was happy to approve. In joining the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities today, the Coalition requires commitment from each member municipality, as mentioned also by Mayor Leslie. The City was very pleased to see that several of the commitments that we're signing on to today complemented the City's strategic plan and aligned with current practices and procedures already implemented organizationally, such as monitoring discrimination in the municipality and taking action to address it, providing equal opportunities as a municipal employer and service provider, challenging discrimination and pr promoting diversity and equal opportunities in housing, and promoting respect, knowledge, and appreciation of cultural diversity and the inclusion of indigenous and racialized communities in the cultural fabric of our municipality. Having said that, it's clear that there is much work yet to be done to achieve a truly welcoming and truly inclusive community. For example, increasing our vigilance against systemic racism and individual discrimination better supporting individuals who experience discrimination, involving citizens by giving them a voice in anti-racism initiatives and decision-making. Today we are honored to declare our commitment, just like Mayor Leslie for the Town of Battleford, today we are also honored as the City of North Battleford to declare our commitment to celebrating and addressing discrimination and racism in our municipality through the further development of focused policy and programming. We are committed to leading by example in upholding human rights within our community, a community that promotes and embraces diversity. Just as our first regional meeting in 2018 and the signing of the Sachiko Wachik Agreement in 2019 were historic mo moments in our region's history, today also marks a historic day as our communities come join together, I'm sorry, the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities to begin networking with 82 other Canadian cities and towns throughout Canada, committed to improving the social and cultural fabric of our nation through promotion of more socially inclusive practices, policies, and programs. Today is a very interesting day. It's June 30th today. Tomorrow is July 1st, Canada Day. Although Canada has many aspects to be proud of, we must recognize and realize that sadly many Canadians do not feel part of Canada. This Canada Day 
Let's remember those who are not celebrating. Let's show res respect to those affected by racism and discrimination. And let's all reflect on what each one of us can do to make all Canadians feel a part of Canada. In closing, I leave you all with these, these thoughts. Diversity in society is a fact. Inclusion in society is a choice. Once again, thank you all for attending today this very special ceremony and witnessing our choice to embrace and celebrate diversity. Thank you very much. now welcome Indigenous leadership to come and speak. I believe uh, Chief Wayne Semeganis from Little Pine First Nation would like to share a few words to get us started. I greet you all and I give thanks to the Creator for giving us another day. I give thanks to our relatives, Senator Jenny Milton for saying prayers for us. I am happy to see a gathering like this. I am happy to hear that there are people that want to make things right. It's been a hard past few weeks, every day is different. The feelings are different from day to day. The news that we hear, news to the world, news to the rest of Canada, not news to us. People talk about history, it happened in the past. I want to tell you right now, it is not in the past. It is happening today. Where we are today on this island, Finlayson Island, just 300 yards this way, we have graves of people that were hanged just because they wanted to feed their families, they wanted treaties honored. These things that are coming up happen to people when nations are at war. And that is the greatest sadness that First Nations people of across Canada signed peace and friendship treaties with the government and the people of Canada. Yet we were treated like we were at war. Those are the hard things that we all have to face. But it is harder even more for my relatives. We never had that voice, ever. When those people were hanged, when our relatives, the chiefs, Palmaker and Big Bear went to court, when Louis Riel was tried and hung, we were not even allowed legal representation. That is what Canada wants to be a history but the reality of it is, it is still like that today. I am glad to see mayors and councils, individuals stepping up, saying that we are all one people and we should all enjoy 
everything equally. But you are going to have the same battle that First Nations have had since we signed treaty. I myself as a chief have gone to Ottawa many times hoping, hoping that the doors would be opened where the Prime Minister of Canada would come and meet with Treaty 6 chiefs and do the business that is very much needs attention. And it never happened. The mayors that are here, they're going to see that difficulty on what we're trying to do today. Around here in our communities, we have all learned to be neighbors. We have faced those struggles. We have learned to accept each other. When disasters occur, I see our farmer neighbors and our urban neighbors together with us, worrying about everything that's transpiring. The struggle we're going to have is with the government of Canada and the government of the provinces, the leaderships. They are the ones that make the rules that hurt. They are the ones that make the policies that have denied us. And I am not trying to be mean when I bring up the hard facts. I'm just trying to get you to see the reality of what we have faced and what you are all going to face. If you step up with us to make things right, and that is the number one issue, to make things right, not to find fault, not to single somebody out, but this is a hard thing that we are going to face because we've been facing it forever. To say the truth that when the settlers first arrived to North America, they had nothing. It's not being mean, it is just saying the truth. Today, the descendants have access to all of Canada because we signed treaties, peace and friendship treaties to share, to share and care. Somewhere, greed got in the way. And again, I'm not trying to make anybody embarrassed or ashamed or feel guilty. For us to make things right, we are going to have to talk about those hard truths. And I worry where we are as a people, for First Nations people, where our respected elders with all that knowledge, no longer very few live with us. I remember when I was a first chief and I was first going to go to Ottawa, I gathered all the seven bands around here, I gathered elders to give me advice on what I should say if I have a chance to speak. Because I am not only representing Little Pine, but all First Nation people. At that time, I was lucky. I had 51 elders that came to sit, to pray, to eat, and to give advice. Today, we would be lucky if we had 12. And that's in all our communities around here. And I am not pointing at a lack of our young leadership because the education they have today is the education of settler governments and it has stolen a lot from us in our education. So when we talk about truth, we have to be very careful. Even from us, from our side, First Nations, we have to sit together and make sure that who sits there for us to represent our future children and grandchildren is there with a the full capacity and the full understanding, the full knowledge to ensure that those treaty promises are lived up to. And that is one thing, one great thing that the cities are going to have is that if you stand with us as First Nations to make things right, you will have the strength, the sacredness and the power of treaty to help guide us. These are not simple agreements, treaties. These are sacred documents to us that even today, our young leadership bear that responsibility. And as uneducated as they are in our spiritual and traditional ways, even them, they feel that the weight of that responsibility. And I'm very thankful to see our relatives the Métis Nation here today, 
local representative Billy Kennedy, president of the Métis Nation, Glenn McCollum, his wife, Verna, and all the support that he has and all the people that work with him that he represents. I talk at their meetings a few times, and I remind them that they are our relatives. They are First Nation, they are treaty. They are Métis, they're deemed Métis because they have Indian blood. They're not Métis because they have white blood. They were the first of our children to be separated from their Indian families in an attempt to weaken us and destroy us. But here we are today, and I'm very happy to see the mayors, and I very much admire your title, your worship. That's a very nice title. <laughs> but I have learned to enjoy their company, learned to enjoy their wisdom, and their caring at tables where we meet. And it is a good sign moving ahead to hear that there are 82 cities in Canada that are willing to take that step. It gives me hope for the future because we, honestly, when I first became chief, we didn't have such partnerships, we didn't have such friendships, we didn't have such open doors, we didn't have such gatherings as today. So I am very hopeful and I know that prayers of all nations that now live in Canada we all learn to pray together. We look at all the people, white people, Indian people, black people, Asian people, Muslim people. But the main thing is we're all people. And that's what we have to focus on. So I encourage everyone not to give up. Let's not have excuses. Stop what we started today. And I encourage everyone to keep meeting like this. Let's celebrate good times, not be brought together just by hard times. And I'm happy to see a young man here that I've seen growing up. His father was a chief at one time, a very good friend of mine. So I'm glad to see some youth here. Gives us hope, us old people hope. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for listening to me. I'll now call Chief Lori Whitecalf from the Sweetgrass First Nation. Um, thank you, everybody, and, and welcome here today. I, I feel honored being here, um, seeing this day. <laughs> I think I've got a cape here happening. <laughs> um, no, it, it's challenging to stand here today in light of um, the recent findings. Um, and we lost an elder today in Sweetgrass. Um, she was cherished. Um, she had a lot of knowledge. I'm lucky to have had her in my life. I was thinking a lot about her coming here today and, and she had an open door policy. Everybody she fed. You can go to her house. She lived by the highway. It didn't matter the color of their skin, their religion, whether or not they attended ceremony if they were lost, if they had addictions, she fed everybody who came through that door. That's our people. As First Nations people, we're welcoming. If we weren't welcoming, we wouldn't have settlers in Canada. So we've always been a sharing, welcoming people. When I spoke to our elders about reconciliation and, and this partnership, they say it's everybody's responsibility. I, I just want to share some of the words that, that um, Your Worship Gillen said about being inclusive, being a choice. That's also a responsibility. Everybody's responsibility as First Nations people and non-First Nations people. So I'm really honored to be here. Um, and, and the ceremony I attended in Delmas the other day It 
it was bittersweet because the elders were there like our the intent of the government was to erase our culture so we were in a teepee i sat on the outside the 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 elders shared the pipe inside the teepee that was intended to be erased the sweet part of that day was practicing our culture but also looking around there was a playground there and there was first nation kids playing on that playground Playing on the playground in the vicinity of a residential school where kids were not allowed to play. Kids were not allowed to have fun and speak their language. So to see those kids playing while the pipe ceremony was happening, I don't have the words to describe that. We're here. We're not going anywhere. And I think, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm honored to be here. And I know this partnership is a good thing. And Mayor Ames, if you need somebody to hold you accountable, I'm here. <laughs> um, no, I just, I want to thank everybody for being here today and taking part. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Whitecalf. I'll now call Chief Brad Swiftwolf from Musman First Nation. All right, uh, thank you, Tom. I can't really complain about how hot it is today because we really went through eight months of winter, so I'm really, really happy to be here. I just want to say uh, that I'm, I'm happy for the invitation to participate in today's discussion, uh, today's ceremony. I want to acknowledge uh, the people that really brought us together um, from the start. And for, for me and Musman, uh, we ended up starting something similar and um, around the lakes, around the lakes of Jackfish and, and Murray Lake. And I was with uh, the Reeve, uh, Sherry Jimmy. So yeah, she got it, she brought us together and and around the Balfords because uh, not Balfords, around the lakes because we had we had issues we had common issues and we really needed to come together and come up with some plans and ideas on how we can help um, come up with solutions. So I, I do want to acknowledge her for for our part uh, for for the small communities back home. But again, on, and when it comes to the Balfords and area, I want to acknowledge um, uh, Bonnie because she's always um, somebody who continuously calls you early in the morning or late at night to make sure that you come to a meeting. So I want to acknowledge Bonnie. Uh, she bribes me with her bannock. So it's always good. Uh, really, over the years, um, we, we built our relationship well with the, uh, with the RM of uh, Miota, which is our, our, the RM that surrounds Busum. And so throughout the years, we built our relationship with, with the leadership there. Because it's always important to have those relationships with the First Nations and outside communities, the external relationships. Um, for us, like for a lot of the First Nations, half of our populations are off reserve. So there's a, a lot of our people are represented by other leadership most of the times uh, in these towns and communities. Um, and the same thing, I'd like to. Uh, we, we built our relationships with uh, North Balford. I remember first time meet, meeting uh, Ian Hamilton. Uh, just kind of a big thing where you're, you're meeting with a big city time uh, mayor and we're just a small First Nation in the community. But at the same time, we, we ended up kind of saying that we are uh, both at the same levels, representing our people and doing what we can to ensure that everybody lives uh, uh, safely and happily and Grow up, growing up in uh, communities that are uh, where we have the best hospitals and the best schools for our children. Um, but since then, we, we've, like for, for me and uh, my community, our relationship with the uh, Balfords and the uh, uh, North Balfords has been great. They're still, they're not, they're not colleagues, they're not uh, other leaders, they're, they've really become our friends. Um, 
were able to have some discussions with them continuously. Uh, they called the they both called here uh, last week after the announcements of um, these uh, these findings at these res residential schools, and I acknowledge them for for giving that call, just reaching out, just saying, "Hey, how's it going? And what can we do?" So um, we've we've always talked about racism, and um, there's a lot of there's a lot of thoughts, ideas around racism, but there's really no action. So. That's kind of why I was uh, asked to come and speak today, was uh, what, what does action look like? Um, what are we going to do about it? There's a lot of ideas and thoughts, like I said, but there's really no follow-up plans, no action behind these plans. We've all, we, all, we've, we all have our own personal um, uh, issues of, of racism. We all run into it. I, I could still go to um, a small town and the music will still stop. Everybody will look. Um, it's just it's still that it's still like that in our region. Like when I do say region, it's all of Saskatchewan basically. I know all our different provinces have different relationships, but it'd be great if we could all look for ways to find solutions on how how we could um, not have the uh, the issues of uh, and, the, and the effects of racism. <sighs> First Nation. Our, our people <clears throat> endured over 100 years of policies, right? They had um, uh, these federal policies that really outlawed our ceremonies, uh, language, all of those things. And we were all put in a reserve, basically a little small small corner of, uh, of the world. Um, there's 74 First Nations in the community in, in Saskatchewan, and they were, all, they were all there. So for about 100 years, you had a lot of oppression. You, yeah, you stay there. We're gonna feed you. Don't worry about it. We're, we'll keep you guys safe. We'll, the RCMP will ensure that you guys are not um, disru disturbed or disrupted. Uh, at the same time, <clears throat> now that the doors have kind of opened, how do you trans transfer from um, the gates open to um, kind of living freely? Because I I still take people uh, with me when I do go on business trips. Uh, and a lot of the young guys are still scared to leave the reserve. It's like no way. It's, I'm not. I'm not going to go out there. It's it's dangerous out there, right? So it's kind of that perspective where it, it's okay to go out there. Um, but uh, yeah, just that's kind of all I had. I didn't really come prepared. Um, I just want to acknowledge the leadership here and their commitments they they're putting forward to uh, making our relationships work. So with that, thank you guys. Thank you, Chief Swift Wolf. Um, I'll now call Chief Crystal Okamau from Lucky Man Cree Nation. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Creator for giving us a, a beautiful day. Um, like Chief Brad said, I'm, I'm not going to complain about the the weather, although it is very hot and I get pretty crispy pretty fast. Um, we have longer winters and shorter summers, so we got to enjoy it. Um, so I want to give thanks uh, to Creator for that. And I want to give thanks to Creator for each and every one of you that are here, that took time out, out of your day to come and, and to hear uh, this history making uh, ceremony today. Uh, my voice gets a little shaky when I get emotional, um, but uh, I, I'm still going to talk. Um, racism is a huge um, thing in my life that I've wanted to address, um, and especially becoming chief. It. I have a bunch of racism stories myself. Um, I still deal with racism on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think it became more important to address it. I have a 12-year-old daughter, and... I want a better life for her and I want her um, to be accepted when she leaves my leaves our home we always we teach our, our pre-k kids and our kindergarten kids to share to be kind 
to play with each other. And I don't know where it happened, where it happens, where that message isn't carried on into our adulthood. And I think um, racism is, is the elephant in the room. And I don't think we can get past it or have any action until we acknowledge it. So having the ceremony today really, um, that's acknowledgement. It exists. And as horrific as some of the stories that I've heard in my life um, regarding residential schools and, and other oppressed tools that were used against our, our people, um, I, get, I do get emotional because I, I've dealt with the effects of that. I know in hearing the stories about what happened in Kamloops and, and um, in Kawasis, uh, like Chief Wayne said, we knew, we knew already but it's the rest of the world that this is news to them. And I have friends on my Facebook that uh, I grew up with their kids and, and I could see their racist um, posts. And I don't think they intentionally do it, but it's just what they believe. And I don't think they believe it to be wrong because that's been the status quo for way too way too long um, but I think people need to understand um, our perspective and being uh, First Nations we've had a lot of oppressed tools to to keep us down and um, it may sound horrific and it does because this is Canada right so that's why a lot of people find it hard to believe that this stuff happened here but it did happen and we need to acknowledge it and we need to grow from it we need to make a different future, not just for my 12-year-old daughter, but for your kids, for your grandkids. I want them to have a better future. So I, I'm, I'm honored to, to be here and, and to share a few words. Um, and I think about, <clears throat> I think about our residential school survivors and the ones that are no longer here. And I would prefer, prefer to call them our warriors. So when you say prayers for yourself and your family, say prayers for the, the families of the ones that didn't get a chance to meet their relatives that didn't come back from residential school, we need to be, we need to show some compassion and empathy. I've read somewhere that the highest form of intelligence is empathy, and uh, I believe that because it's literally putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. And when you do something like that, it doesn't, you, you don't only learn, but you also grow from that. You, um, you become a better person, and I think. Um, it's up to each and every one of us to be better than we were yesterday. It's not only a responsibility as ourselves as leaders, and you don't have to be an elected official to be a leader. The responsibility, and I've heard this earlier, is up to each and every one of us. If you see racism, if you hear racism, take a stand, make a stand, because if you don't say anything, then you're part of the problem. And we don't need any more problems. We have enough already. It's going to be a tough road. It is. Um, and, um, but I'm anxious because the time for change is now. Um, there's so much happening. And I, I believe that nothing happens by mistake or for nothing. Um, it's a chance for opportunity and for growth. And I think that's what this ceremony is. And I'm, and I'm grateful for the 82 municipalities that signed on to this. And I'm grateful to Mayor Ames and Mayor Gillen for taking the step. I commend your courage. It's going to be a long road. My prayers will be with us, with you. 
And I ask for prayers from everybody else. Be accepting of each other. Forgive each other. Love yourself so you can love others. Respect yourself so you can respect others. You can't give from an empty well, so take care of yourself. But take care of each other as well. Uh, um, I'll leave it at that for now, and thank you for your time, and safe journeys home to your home fires. Thank you, Chief Okimau. I'll now call President Glenn McCollum from the Métis Nation, Saskatchewan. Thank you. Tini Gemarshi, Kitiega Yamahain, Miyashin, Tatogamama Opia, Ayamahaya, Creator, Tekskita, Kimamtani Maya, Kogisha no Mamtani Mugaya. And thank you for the mayors, the chiefs, being here. As I'm watching and sitting, how can we begin to be able to be upfront with a question of racism? When I go places, I speak my language. If I was to speak my language all the way through this presentation or speaking to you and not use the English language, what would you think? Each and every one of you. It hits you in a certain way. And in your heart. If we're going to change communities, he's bringing the witty, no, the whiskey, no, the chinasa, who is the no, the whiskey, mancia, kaita musik tapatama. To be able to turn our lives around and not just stand and watch racism. I'm speaking in Cree and in English, translating as I'm doing it. You know, Aponia, President Kaitapian, being the president of the Métis Nation, I spoke at our assembly. See, Magnia, my language, Apatitayan, Dayamun, and I use my language. And from the crowd, speak English, I don't understand. Think about those little children that have been found and all the many children that were taken away from their homes at a very young age to be in a foreign place, not to know the language. And yet today, we are questioned when we talk, talk our language, practice our culture, our traditions. You know, everybody sitting here come from different countries. I try as much as I can yeah, as president of the Métis Nation to practice inclusion. We have people in our office that are from Pakistan, Iran, and they're good people non-indigenous people working for us. We have First Nations, Musaman, Dorothy, very good friend of mine, works for us. So we just not only talk about diversity, but we act. To bring other people to be able to know who we are. So it, only, it doesn't only take the leaders, myself, Wayne, or the mayors. It takes you. As you walk away from this meeting today, this gathering, what are you going to do? What are you going to talk to your family about? What are you going to talk to your friends about? Your friends. How are you going to change? them to be able to think other than what they thought. We got a visit. 
The most important thing for us as indigenous people is our identity, culture, values, and our language. If we forget those, we will be forgotten, and but we will never forget. So it's a big challenge as the mayors go forward to be able to be inclusive. Kahkiwe ita mau sa gupiti, inclusiveness ta mau sa gupiti, ta mau sa gupiti. Cagay si inuak, ta mau atuski to work together. That's a big challenge. But they've taken it on, and they got the full support of the First Nations leaders and the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. In their journey, we will be there for you, and you will be there for us. Even now, when I was sitting there, we have a hard time, something that we don't pay for, a compliment. I sat there when they were complimented in regards to the effort that they were making. I was the only one clapping my hands. We don't pay for this. It's a compliment. We have to begin that. It's just like we're walking on eggshells, not knowing when to react to things. I've clapped in the assembly, made the assembly all by myself in front clapping. Then I have to explain why I'm clapping. I'm complimenting. We have to do that. We have to come out of our shells be able to be free, to be able to speak, to be able to enjoy. To try and be happy. Because inclusion is a big word. How do we bring people in to be able to understand the things that we want to do is the best interest of them, our people. You know, in the city of Battleford, the two cities side by side, when they win to address the issue of racism, we all win. The reserves, when they change and try and be inclusive of others, they win. The Métis Nation, when we start to change and be inclusive of others, we win. And I hope all of Saskatchewan we come to the, wakes up to the fact that we need to change and we need to win together and make a better Canada. That's what we have to do. And it's not only in our hands as leaders, but it's in your hands. And it's in your hands to change. When we leave here, don't leave it up to the mayors only or myself or the chiefs. Do it too. Like the woman chief said, speak up. Make a stand. I too told the story to my wife when we were crossing the bridge in regards to the, chi the, the people that were hung here. And Louis Riel, our leader, they stood for something and they believed they have a right. But the Canadian government said no. Are we going to continue saying no? Are we going to really work on inclusion to be a part of Canada that can, can be great, part of Saskatchewan that can be great? That's what I work on as the president of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, to be inclusive. We didn't have to be asked by our mayor of Battleford when the homelessness money ran out. We gave money. Through the COVID, we brought together the First Nations communities in Northern Saskatchewan to be able to work together and not draw lines. That's what we need with the municipalities. Thinking outside the box. In order for us to win, systematic racism, individual racism exists, but how are you gonna work outside that system? To be able to think outside the box in order to achieve inclusion. Our RCMP members are here. How much have they worked with us? To be able to compliment each other, I compliment the work that you do and the hard work that you do. Thank you.
But we need to speak, we need to communicate. Put time here to ya. In order for things to be better. Tamamo up, suya Together we will make a difference. And that's what I think about when I'm sitting, like I said. What do I say that would wake up individuals to be able to realize if you don't speak up, you're part of the problem, but what can you say and how are you going to do it? Engage with your leaders, engage with your community. Think outside the box. He's been in the way to know a better Canada and a better Saskatchewan. We have to think outside the box if we need a better Saskatchewan in Canada. There were all one, a one, one people. When I look around the different cultures, oh, you're proud too to have your language. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have your language. And we respect that. But here today, I'm so grateful to be asked to come here and to be able to speak, but more importantly, to be able to support the mayors and the, and the chiefs moving forward as one and hopefully address the, the question, which is racism. I'll be a part of it. You have my full support in what you're doing. And when you need me, I'm only a phone call away. I'm So thank you, elders, for the prayer, and thank you for being here and listening to me for a bit. On behalf of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan, we 100% support what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, President McCollum. Uh, I'm a semi-recent transplant to the region, and so I want to make sure before we move on that are, if there are any other Indigenous leaders who would like to make an address, uh, the time is now. Okay, seeing no other speakers. Um, the Honorable Rosemary Falk, Member of Parliament for Battlefords, Lloydminster, sadly couldn't join us today, but passed along some remarks that I will read to you now. To the city of North Battleford and town of Battleford, I am pleased to extend my warmest greetings to all attendees of the public signing of the Declaration of the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. Canada is a nation of inclusivity and diversity. We as Canadians champion human rights, social inclusion, and the continued improvement of our communities. Through the signing of this declaration, this milestone event embodies the commitment of both communities to these attributes. I applaud the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities' vision to work alongside municipalities, organizations, and individuals alike to unify and strengthen our communities. The promotion of equality and inclusion is paramount to a Canada where all Canadians have the opportunity to prosper. I would like to conclude these greetings with a quote on inclusion that I found quite powerful. It reads, what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. I wish you great success as you endeavor towards greater inclusivity and once again congratulate you on this momentous occasion. With those remarks from the Honorable um, Rosemary Falk, We'll now turn to uh, the member for the Saskatchewan Legislative Assembly for the Battlefords constituency, Mr. Jeremy Cockrell. Thank you, Tom. It is a very beautiful day here in Finlayson Island and on Treaty 6 territory. And I'd like to thank the elders and the First Nations and Métis leadership for their words and presence today. It is great to hear from you at this event. I'd also like to thank uh, Mayors Leslie and Mayor Gillen for the invitation to be here today and to bring greetings on behalf of the government of Saskatchewan. And I'll also thank my colleague Ryan Domitor, who represents the constituency of Cutknife Turtleford 
for joining me here today. Thank you, Ryan. You know, when I was thinking about this event uh, last week, I was I had the privilege of attending the National Indigenous Peoples Day celebrations at the Western Development Museum last Monday. And something that the MC said at that event has kind of stuck with me, and it's been playing in my mind over and over again since that day. And he, he made, the MC made this comment, reconciliation is doing things together. And that's just kind of been playing in my mind in the last week here. And when I think about uh, what the mayors are signing and committing to doing today, along with the help of First Nations, uh, First Nations and Métis neighbors, um, that is what we're doing. We're committing to do life together. Right? We're committing to do life together in Battleford and North Battleford and, and this greater region. And whether that's working or playing or socializing, um, we are doing that together and we're committing to that. So I'd like to commend and affirm the two mayors and uh, everybody in the region for committing to that. And so, and I really appreciate the words from Chief Crystal and President McCallum about taking that sentiment into each of our own personal lives. And, uh, what, whatever we may do every day, again, that line, reconciliation is doing things together, has been playing in my mind. And as I go about town, it, it, I think about that. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to continuing doing life together with all of you as we go forward here. So thank you very much for having me today. Now we will have an address from Mr. Roger Haywood, Word, President of the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association. Good afternoon. My name is, uh, like was said, Roger Hayward. I'm President of the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association, or SUMA for short. <laughs> it's going to muss my hair, and that is a joke. SUMA represents Saskatchewan cities, towns, villages, resort villages, and northern communities. Both the city of North Battleford and the town of Battleford are our members. It is truly an honor to be here today representing Saskatchewan's hometowns, as the city of North Battleford and the town of Battleford sign on to this important initiative. The signing comes at a deeply sorrowful time in our province with the discovery of hundreds of unmarked graves at the site of the former Maryville Residential School. We stand in grief with the Kausas First Nation and all other Indigenous communities, and our communities remain committed to working toward reconciliation. The signing of the Declaration of the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities today shows that commitment as the City of North Battleford and the Town of Battleford pledge to do their part in eliminating discrimination and building inclusive communities. Saskatchewan cities, towns, villages, resort villages, and northern municipalities play an important role in building open and inclusive communities. We are responsible for ensuring everyone feels safe, respected, and comfortable in our communities, and that everyone has an equal chance to not only participate, but thrive. I do believe that as leaders of the cities, towns, villages, resort villages, northern communities, the band councils, the Métis Nation, the First Nations, we are all the first level of government, the first order of government in our province. We're closest to our people, like to our residents, that we see every day what happens in our communities. And by signing this today, I truly believe this is showing our provincial government and federal governments that we're starting from the ground up and we're going to make those changes. We're committed to making those changes. It's been said it's going to be a tough road, and it is. There's no doubt about it. It will be a hard, long road, but we are committed to going down that road and showing the other levels of government what needs to be done. So I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the councils of both communities for recognizing the importance of promoting inclusivity and diversity and working to continually improve their communities. It is an inspiration for all of our hometowns in the entire province, our First Nations, our Métis Nations. So thank you very much. I'm very honored to be part of this today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayward. 
I believe with the addresses concluded, uh, there's nothing to do but have the mayors uh, add their autographs to the forms in front of them. So I think we will proceed to the signing of the declaration now and move to some closing remarks from both mayors. Do it together. Once again, I want to thank everybody for attending today and, and uh, for the leadership, for, for the kind words of wisdom. Um, I, I want to acknowledge as well the, the lovely ladies from the Immigration Centre. Um, thank you for attending today. Uh, you folks and your employees fight a hard battle every single day, making our community more inclusive. Um, thank you very much for coming out today. Um, and, and everybody else, um, thank you for taking the time. Uh, it's never easy to, to admit uh, we have a problem. It's even harder to take action. Um, and and uh, like I said, I'll reaffirm, please keep us accountable um, as, as we won't be perfect. Um, do you want to acknowledge um, Ryan Bader as well? He has uh, been mon monumental in, in, in change in our community from his perspective. Um, and I just want to acknowledge uh, the hard work he did uh, to get things started. So thank you, Ryan. I'll turn it over to His Worship, Yon. Yeah, I know everybody's pretty hot and don't want any more speeches, so I just want to also thank the elders, thank the chiefs, and thank President McCallum for his, uh, his very pointed words. And I want to also mention the people who were so instrumental in organizing this today, especially the two administrations from the city and the town, uh, City Manager Randy Patrick and uh, Ash from the town, the town manager right here, um, and, of course, our, our staff, too numerous to, to mention by name, but you know who you are. Thank you very much, because it was a lot of work to put this on today, and we really need to appreciate them as well. I'm sorry? Yeah. yeah, and sorry, last but not least, thank you, Tom, for a great job emceeing today. And uh, we do have some refreshments left. If uh, We do would like to get a few photos, especially for uh, with elected people, if you don't mind staying around for a couple more photos. And other than that, please feel free to, uh, to socialize as you can stand the heat. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. They asked me to come up here and say a closing prayer. Uh, earlier, you heard uh, Senator Jenny uh, say a prayer in Cree. I am one of them unfortunate ones that I understand more than I can speak. So I am going to speak in the English language. I'd also like all of you to also say a prayer to help me. I, I'm going to start right away. Hi. Dear God, I pray that you will just watch over us, keep us all safe. Take us home to our home fires, whether they are far or near. I pray that you will just heal the people. Be with the people as we deal with the racism in our countries, in our towns. I pray that you will just help us deal with it one day at a time to eliminate the racism that we face on a daily basis. I pray that you will just give everybody a safe journey home, back to their home fires. I ask you to watch over us all, heal us, and keep us safe. Hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.